popular among the automotive tools available from Master Cool has been the 71475 Universal Hydraulic Flaring Tool Set. The popular 71475 has now been upgraded to the 72475 and 72485 sets. The 71475 serve both professional and prosumer users in the automotive tubing field. The new features in the 72475 system include an upgraded hydraulic system and a redesigned yoke that has an enlarged die set compression area for better grip of the dies, a tube and die set stabilizing arm for alignment and more easy forming of tubing, a magnetic adapter holder that keeps adapters in place when working under vehicles and in awkward positions, and overall improved hydraulics. Like other master cooled tools, the 72475 and 72485 Universal Hydraulic Flaring Tool Set is professional grade. Enthusiasts with an interest in doing a professional grade job also find these tools useful. The 72475 tool set consists of the Hydroflare yoke and pump assembly that is common to the master cool hydraulic sets. Interchangeability of tools is one of the strongest features of the master cool platform. All Master Cool kits come in a plastic molded box, and the box for the 72475 is similar to the box for the 72485. The set begins with push connect adapters in quarter inch, 5 16 and 3 8 inch size, and push connect die sets in quarter inch, 5 16 and 3 8 size. For popular 45 degree and double flaring, the 45 degree and double flare die sets come in 3 16 quarter inch, 5 16 3 8 and half inch size. The adapters for double flaring include 3 16 quarter inch, 5 16 3 8 and a half inch. The double inverted flare requires a 45 degree cone as well. There is also a set of metric bubble flaring adapters in 4.75 mm, 6 mm, 8 mm, and 10 mm. The flaring die sets that match for metric bubble flaring include the 4.75, 6 mm, 8 mm, and 10 mm sizes. GM fuel lines, the 72475 kit, includes 5 16 and 3 8 adapters and 5 16 as well as 3 8 dies. The 72485 kit adds two dies and two adapters, the half inch as well as 3 8 inch, and the matching dies that include the GM transmission cooling line 3 8 adapter as well as the General Motors half inch transmission cooling line adapter. This is the 3 8 die. This is the half inch die for GM transmission cooling lines. The 72485 Universal Hydraulic Flaring Tool Set is capable of making push connect fittings, GM fuel fittings, 45 degree double flare fittings, ISO bubble flare fittings, and GM transmission fittings. The 72475 Universal Hydraulic Flaring Tool Set is capable of making the same fittings with the exception of the GM transmission cooling fittings. These master cool tools are capable of flaring steel, NICOP, ultra bend, and stainless steel tubing. On any stainless steel tubing, it's assumed that it's light stainless or annealed stainless brake grade tubing. In addition to these tools, the 72480 is available for flaring 37 degree single and double flares. These would be the factory style 37 degree and 37 degree double flares found on aviation and specialty automotive applications. Since this tool also uses the 71202 hydroflare yoke and pump assembly, the addition of the 37 degree flaring and double flaring dies and adapters can upgrade any 72485 or 72475 set.
the 37 degree cone, a 3 16 double flare adapter, quarter inch double flare adapter, 5 16 double flare adapter, 3 8 double flare adapter, half inch double flare adapter, and matching dies for each of these adapters are available for 37 degree specialty applications. To demonstrate the use of the 72475 or 72485 master cool flaring tools, let's begin with the most common. 3 16 US domestic tubing. Tubing should always be prepared before flaring, which includes square cutting with a tubing cutter and deburring both inside and outside the tube. Once tubing has been cut squarely and deburred, we can begin the flaring process. The tools involved are the master cool, handle, and yoke. This is a hydro flare tool with the 45 degree inverted flare adapter and cone adapter with the 45 degree inverted flare die. This die set is designed for the inverted 45 degree flare on a 3 16 inch tube. And we begin by inserting the tube, carefully cut squarely, and deburred both inside and outside. Insert this into the yoke end of the 72475 tool. The die and tube can be squared up and the handle with a large compression area is tightly secured. Once this clamp is secure with a valve open, the first stage die for a 45 degree inverted flare can be inserted in the magnetic holder. The handle is rotated until the first stage adapter is square and centered at the end of the tube, at which point the valve is closed securely and the handle can be pumped even strokes with uniform pressure get the best results and with the first firm resistance pumping can be stopped open the valve rotate the handle counterclockwise until the adapter is clear of the die remove the adapter Insert the 45 degree inverted cone for the second stage of the 45 degree inverted flare. Place it in the magnetic holder, making certain that it's on center. Rotate the handle with the valve open until the cone is centered on the tube and flush with the end of the tube. Close the valve and pump the handle until firm resistance is met. Stop there. Do not over tighten. Release the valve, retract the handle, loosen the clamp, and remove the die set and tube. Note the double inverted 45 degree flare. Nicely formed. One of the significant differences between professional grade flare tools and others is the ability to repeatedly create accurate angles and properly form seats. Let's go through these steps again. 3 16 tubing, cut with a tubing cutter, and deburred inside and outside as described in our other videos. Put brake fluid on the tip of the tube, assemble the die halves. Tighten the clamp securely. Lubricate the first stage adapter with brake fluid or caster grease. Turn the handle inward with the valve open. Make sure the valve is open. And be certain that the adapter is aligning with the center of the tube. Close the gap. Close the valve. Pump until the first real resistance is felt. Release the valve. Retract the handle of the Hydro Flare tool. Remove the adapter. This is the first stage of a 45 degree inverted double flare. Dip the cone tip in brake fluid. Rotate the handle 
until the cone aligns with the center of the first stage tube flare. Close the valve, pump, until resistance is felt, release the valve, unscrew the hydro flare handle, remove the cone, and a consistent, repeatable flare has been formed. Loosen the clamp, remove the die in tube, Note the nicely formed inverted double flare. This is a 45 degree common SAE flare and a uniform shoulder on the flare that is much like a machine formed double inverted flare. To minimize marring of the upper shank of the tube, caster grease or brake fluid will reduce friction in the dies. We'll experiment with caster grease to see what kind of results we get. If you're using quality tubing, this marring can be eliminated with wire brushing or buffing. What we're striving for here is an optimal 45 degree inverted flare, double flared with the inside diameter of the inverted flare equal to the diameter of the tube. This is repeatable and consistent with the Master Cool Hydro Flare tools. To form better flares and reduce friction in the dies, we'll use Miller's Red Rubber Grease, a caster-based grease that is not harmful to break rubber parts. A thin film of caster-based grease in the dies and adapters will reduce friction and help eliminate marring of the tube shank. Some jobs require cosmetic appeal, and we'll see what kind of difference this makes. Careful alignment helps assure that the dies and tube are square, and the length of the tube extension is correct to form the flare. Secure the clamp snugly. Make sure that the Master Cool Hydro Flare tool valve is open. Insert the first stage adapter into the holder and rotate the Hydro Flare handle until the tip centers up accurately with the tube. Always make sure that the dimple on the adapter is centered in the tube to prevent damage to the tube or the adapter. Close the valve, pump the handle to produce the first stage flare of a 45 degree double inverted flare. When reasonable resistance is met, open the valve, turn the handle outward enough to remove the adapter and the first stage of the flare has been formed. Install the cone in the holder. Screw the hydro flare handle in, making certain that the cone is centered on the tube. Close the valve and pump the handle evenly so you have a feel for what's going on. When reasonable resistance is met, open the valve. Screw the hydro flare handle outward. Remove the cone adapter and note the formation of a consistent, repeatable, inverted 45 degree double flare. Loosen the clamp, remove the tube and die, and see what the grease has produced here. We can see a pattern. The remaining pattern on the upside of the flare is minimal. For utility work, this would be optimal, as the zinc plating is not affected. Note that the flare nut would be in place before the tube is formed. If we want to remove the remainder of this imprinting, that can be easily done on a wire brush or buffer wheel. We'll use a wire brush. Most of this section of the tube would be covered by the tube nut, but wire brushing removes the die clamping marks. What we're striving for is a consistent double inverted 45 degree flare, which the 72, 475, and 485 tools easily produce. It's worth noting that the quality of the tubing and the electro zinc plating 
make a difference in terms of resistance to marring during the tube flaring process. This practice tubing is not the highest grade, although it is 28 thousandths wall thickness and an improved quality would reduce the likelihood of this kind of marring. Let's move to an ISO bubble flare. This is where the Master Cool Hydro Flare tool excels. The die set for the ISO 4.75 mm size, or 4 mm as indicated here, is optimal for a DIN style ISO bubble flare. Note that the backside is not a 45 degree flare, but rather a flat deck surface with a slight bevel to provide a neck at the backside of the flare. The procedure for forming this flare is similar to the first stage of a 45 degree inverted double flare. This is the ISO adapter. We're using 3 16 brake tube in this case, which is essentially the same size as 4.75 millimeter. Valve backed off, turn the hydro flare handle inward, and make certain that the dimple is centered on the tube. When contact is made, tighten the valve, and pump the handle. Uniform strokes work best, the tool is very powerful, capable of handling tubing up to one half inch diameter. When reasonable resistance is met, loosen the valve, back the hydro flare handle off, remove the adapter, and note the shape of the bubble flare. We'll take a close look at that. This is a bubble flare with a flat back and slight radius, which is ideal, at the back side of the flare. This prevents a sharp break that would otherwise put the tube flare at risk, and the flare is now fully formed. The tube is ready for installation. Don't forget to put the nut on before you form flares, otherwise you'll be cutting off the flare to install a nut and reform another flare. Let's make one more bubble flare. This work can be performed under the chassis where room permits. A small amount of red rubber grease will reduce the friction between the adapter and the tube. Insert the adapter into the holder. Valve open, turn the hydro flare handle inward, watch the dimple on the adapter, make certain that it's centered with the tube. Once the dimple is centered, there's no risk of damaging the adapter or the tube end. Close the valve, uniform strokes with the pump handle until resistance is felt. Open the valve, back out the handle, and a nice bubble flare has been formed. The Master Cool 72485 and 475 flaring tool set is capable of handling tubing up to one half inch diameter. This would be typical 3 8 fuel line. We're going to form a double inverted 45 degree flare end on it and begin by cutting the tube end squarely using our rigid roller bearing tool with a stainless steel blade. Uniform bites will decrease the likelihood of work hardening the cut end. We end up with a square cut end, quickly, that can be deburred with our inside and outside deburring tool. The quality of the deburring process and prepping of the tubing is essential for proper forming of flares. 
Here we're forming 3 8 fuel or brake double inverted flare 45 degrees. The die set is 45 degree inverted 3 8 flare. Tubing is standard fuel or brake grade steel. The procedure is the same as it was with a 3 16 brake tubing, only this is larger and requires more clamping pressure. Square up the die set and tube. And when securing the handle on the clamp, be certain to exert a significant amount of force. Otherwise the tube will push through the dies. Once the clamp handle is secure, insert the 45 degree 3 8 inch inverted flare adapter and screw the hydro flare handle while guiding the adapter steadily on center. Bring the handle up flush. Close the valve. Applying uniform force, squeeze the handle until firm resistance is felt. Back off the valve, screw out the hydro flare handle. Remove the adapter and insert the cone for 45 degree inverted double flare. Note the first stage flare has been formed. Turn the handle inward until the cone reaches the tip of the tube. Close the valve and pump the handle. Even strokes until resistance is felt. Loosen the valve, back off the hydro flare handle, remove the adapter, and note the perfectly flared 3 8 inverted 45 degree double flare. Loosen the handle, and note that the flare Inside diameter is the same as the diameter of the tube. This is an optimal double inverted flare, 45 degrees. With a flare nut backing it up, this would be an ideal fuel line or larger brake line. Note the uniform fold. This flare is ready for service. The 72475 and 72485 Master Cool flaring tool sets will each perform flares on GM fuel lines. These type fittings require an O-ring. They have a special adapter and a special set of dies that work with the GM fuel lines. Here, we'll form a 3 8 fuel line using the GM adapters. This process will be a single step using the GM fuel adapter. The process begins as it would with any of the other flaring operations. The die set is placed carefully in the yoke. The alignment tool is placed on the end to square up the die set and the tube end. The tube has been prepped using a stainless steel cutter and deburred. On this larger size tubing, be certain to set the clamp solidly to prevent the tube from sliding through. Back the hydro flare unit off and insert the adapter in the magnetic holder. Make certain the valve is open at this point. Rotate the hydro flare carefully, making certain that the adapter slides over the tube and that the tube is fitting into the recess in the adapter. Close the valve. Simply pump the hydraulic flaring tool until the adapter seats squarely. Release the valve and back off the hydro flare. Remove the adapter and loosen the clamp. Note that the tube has not slipped through the die set. We should have a perfectly formed fuel connector. This type of connector will use an O-ring at the flange.
Now let's move on to the next connector. This is a push connect common to Jeep transmission lines and other types of applications that require a garter spring type connector. We'll begin by cutting this flare that we formed. We get a nice square cut and we'll follow up with the deburring tool on the inside and outside edges of the tube. This flaring operation is a 3 8 push connect. The push connect type fittings are used on transmission and power steering lines. Jeep vehicles use this and you'll find this adapter handy. Note how much deeper the adapter is. We'll put some grease on this. Again, we're using red rubber lube. In this case, the collapsing element, though, will be this far down, and this requires a great deal of clamping pressure. The tubing is steel, not stainless, but mild steel. The die set is squarely placed in the yoke, and the tube is squared with the end of the die set. Hold that in place as you tighten the clamp and secure the clamp tightly. When in doubt whether the tube is sliding or not, use a marking pin to mark the tube on the inside. And this will enable you to keep track of whether the tube is pushing out of the die during the compression process. To prevent binding during this operation, we will place a small amount of grease on the inside edge of the adapter. Drop the adapter into the holder Make sure the valve is open, and when screwing the hydro flare unit, be certain to make sure that the tube is captured inside the adapter and that there is no binding between the adapter and the die set. This is a deep recess in the adapter. Turn the hydro flare in sufficiently and close the valve. Watch the mark to be certain that the tube is not sliding out of the die as force is applied. Make certain that the clamp is tight. And apply hydraulic pressure uniformly. This is the GM transmission cooling line adapter in two sizes. This is the 3 8 inch. There's also a half inch that comes with the adapter and the die set. This is 3 8 tubing that has been cut with the rigid stainless steel wheel and deburred both inside and outside. Forming the transmission cooling line flare is not difficult. The die set is squared up in the yoke. The tube is made flush with the end of the die set. And the clamp is secured. On this larger size tubing, make certain that the clamp is tight to prevent the tube from sliding out of the die under pressure. The adapter is placed in the holder. When threading the hydro flare, be certain that the adapter centers over the tube. Periodically grease the hydro flare threads, tighten the valve, and pump steadily watching the tube to be certain that it's not sliding through the die set. This will be a successful flare the connection for a General Motors transmission cooling line. Loosen the valve to retract the adapter and back the hydro flare head out to loosen the adapter from the die set. Loosen the clamp Remove the tube and die set. The result here is an optimal connection for a General Motors transmission cooling line.
The Master Cool 72485 would include this die set, two dies for 3 8 and half inch, and two adapters for 3 8 and half inch. Again, these die sets and adapters are available separately if you have the 72475 Master Cool Hydraulic Flaring Tool Set. Master Cool is a family owned and operated company that supplies professional air conditioning tools, a variety of service tools, and niche equipment for the automotive and HVAC and refrigeration industries.